So object-oriented programming in Roblox is actually not as difficult as it seems. I remember when I first started learning about it, I thought it was like freaking rocket science and that's how you may feel too. But in this video, I'm gonna explain it to you as if you were literally a two-year-old. So just sit back, watch this video, and hopefully by the end of it, you're gonna learn what object-oriented programming is in Roblox and you'll be able to learn how to actually do it. So first things first, let's go ahead and open up a, a module script inside of service storage. So let's go ahead and insert a module script there. And then we're gonna rename this to player class because what we're gonna be doing is we're gonna be making a player class. So we're gonna go ahead and copy this name first things first and we're gonna replace it with both of these. And now we are basically good to go. So when it comes to object oriented programming in Roblox, I want you to remember these two terms mainly. So the first one is gonna be something called a class. And then the second one is gonna be something called an object. Now what a class is, is basically the blueprint to creating multiple objects. So if we have a player class, from this player class, we're gonna be creating multiple objects each time a player joins the game. And the way we create objects in Roblox Lua is with object oriented programming. So let's go ahead and get into it first things first. So what we have to do first things first is we have a new class called player class and we put it inside of a module script. And right now I have it in server storage because the information we put in here does not want to be in replicated storage because then exploiters can potentially get to it and this is not something that I want exploiters to be able to change and stuff like that. So basically what we're doing is we're making a player class and we're going to add an information that when each player joins the game will be added to their own player class. So for example, we're gonna want the players, so we're gonna say player is equal to nil, and then let's say we're gonna give them a level, and the level is gonna be equal to nil as well, and then we're gonna give them some XP, and that's gonna be equal to zero, and then we're gonna have like a multiplier, for example, and then we're gonna have this equal to nil, and let's actually change this XP to nil as well, and then let's just have one for like their name, for example, so name is equal to nil. Now we have our blueprint for our player class, so every time we make a player class, we're gonna wanna fill in these right here. And once we fill all these in, we will now have a new object that we're gonna assign to each player, obviously. So what we are going to do is first things first, we have to say player class dot underscore underscore index is equal to player class. And we just have to do this because Roblox Lua technically does not have their own object oriented programming. So we kind of have to do like a workaround with like meta tables and stuff like that. But you don't really need to worry about what any of that means. All you need to worry about is that every time you create a new class, which is the blueprint for each object, you need to use this dot underscore underscore index method. And we're just going to set it equal to itself. So now what we're going to do is we're going to make a new function. So we're going to say function player class dot new open close parentheses. And then we can just go ahead and click enter. So now what we're going to do is basically every time we create a new player class, we're going to go ahead and call this function. So what we're going to do is we're going to say local self is equal to set meta table. And then we're going to go ahead and pass through the player class and then an empty table. So now this stuff is kind of complicated and you don't really have to worry about what it means. Basically, all you need to know is that every time you create a new object, you will have to use a set meta table function. And yeah, you're going to have to create a new self. And that's all you need to do. So now we have all of these up here. So we're gonna, gonna, we're gonna wanna actually fill these in for each player. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna pass the player through here. We're gonna pass through the level, the XP, the multiplier, and the name. So basically every time we call this function and a new player is added to the game, we're gonna go ahead and pass in these five arguments each time. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna say self.player is equal to player, or actually I'm gonna change this to a capital P so that way we don't get it confused. So self.player with a capital P is equal to the player. And then I'll say self.level is equal to level. And then I'm going to do the same for all the rest. Self.multiplier is equal to multiplier and self.name is equal to name. And then we have to remember to return the self. So now that we have this set up, what we could do is we can go ahead and go into server script service and add in a new script. And then we're going to get two services. So first things first, we're going to get the player service. So we'll say local players is equal to game get service players. And then let's get the server storage. So local server storage is equal to game get service server storage. That is not server storage. There we go. And then let's go ahead and get this player class module. So we'll say local player class module is equal to require server storage wait for child player class. Now what we're going to do is every time a new player joins the game, we're going to create a new player object. So we're going to say players.player added colon connect to a function. And then let's go ahead and pass through this player here. And then all we're going to do is we're going to call player class module. And then you guys guessed it dot new. 
And then we're just going to go ahead and pass these five things in. So since this is a pretty simple thing right now and we don't have like any level saved or any XP saved, what we're going to do is just we're going to go ahead and pass through a player here. For the level, we're going to put it as one. The XP will be zero. Multiplier will be one. And then the name is going to be the player.name. So now if we go ahead and print out, and also we could actually wrap this around a variable. So we'll say local new underscore player underscore class is equal to, because as you guys remember, it does return the self. And this self is actually the object that we created. So if we go ahead and print out that new underscore player underscore class, I want you guys to stop and think for a second, what is it actually going to print out? So we're going to go ahead and run the game and see what it prints out. And as you can see, it prints out a table. And inside of this table, we have all of our little arguments here. So we have our level, we have our multiplier, we have our name, and we have the player, we have the XP, and then we have this stuff. We have the index and we have the function. So now we have our own little player stats that we created here. And that is pretty cool. But how do we actually put this to good use? So here's where I'm going to teach you the third thing that I want you guys to remember. It is something called a method. So I'm going to show you guys in real time what a method looks like because me personally, I'm a visual learner. So I like to see people actually do things. So let's take a real example. Let's say that, for example, I'm going to go ahead and add in a part here. And then we're going to rename this to P underscore giver. And then we're just going to go ahead and make it a little bit bigger, kind of like that. And then we'll just make it like green, for example. And then I'm going to change it to neon. And also, guys, real quick, before we go ahead and keep going in this video, I do have a program where I teach people how to script from beginner to advanced. And we also make two big projects in there. So if you guys are interested, check it out. First link in the description. But anyways, let's keep going into the video. So we're going to go ahead and anchor this part. And then let's add a click detector inside of it. So now what I want to do is every time we click this part right here, we're going to go ahead and give our players some XP using a method. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to make a new method. So the way we do this is we say function. And then we go ahead and reference that player class. And instead of doing dot, we actually do colon. And then we can name it whatever we want. So we'll just name this one give P. And then we can go ahead and enter. Now, something really cool is that we actually get the object itself whenever we go ahead and call this. So we have the self already. So now all we want to do is we want to go ahead and increase the XP. So we'll say self P plus equals. And then inside of here, we're going to go ahead and pass through the amount of XP we want to give. So we'll just say P underscore amount. So we'll do plus equals XP underscore amount. And then we can go ahead and print out self dot XP after we are done. So for now, now, for example, whenever we go ahead and click this click detector, we're going to go ahead and call this method. So let's go ahead and go back to our script that we put in service script service. And I'm just going to name this main. And then we're going to go ahead and reference this XP giver. So we'll say local XP underscore giver is equal to game dot workspace. Wait for child XP underscore giver. And then let's just reference the click detector. So local CD is equal to XP giver, wait for child click detector. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to say CD dot mouse click, colon connect to a function, and that gives us the player. And now what we want to do is we actually need to get the player class from the player. So as you guys can see up here, we got the player class because we actually created the new object here and we were able to wrap it into a variable. But how do we go ahead and get it just from the player itself? Well, the way we do this is I usually like to actually inside of our class make a table that stores all of the objects. So what I'm going to say is I'm going to make a new table called player class dot all underscore player classes is equal to an empty table. Now that we have an empty table, every time we create a class, we're going to go ahead and insert the self into this table. Now, there are two scenarios that could happen. The first scenario is that we will only ever create we will only ever create one object per player and the second scenario is we could create multiple objects per player now what i want you guys to think is which of these scenarios do we fall into when we're creating a player class well the correct answer is that we're only going to create one object per player because these are like our player stats and there's no reason to create multiple um player stats for ourselves because we have everything we need right here but, like let's say for example we had a pet class is equal to a pet and then we had like pet is equal to nil level is equal to zero name is equal to nil in this case we would actually be creating multiple objects per player because we could have multiple pets per player but in this case we're only going to have one player class per player so we fall into this first scenario so with this first scenario what we could do is we could actually just say table.insert and then we're going to go ahead and reference this table right here so we'll say player class all underscore player classes and then the value is going to be self right here 
So this is pretty simple. We just go ahead and insert our object into this all player classes. So that way we could actually reference it from um, different scripts. And let's say, for example, we did have a pet class, for example, just because this will happen to you guys if you guys are working with um, object oriented programming. So I'm just going to go ahead and make one real quick, something simple like this. What you would want to do, and actually before I explain this, a better way to actually do this would just to be player class, uh, all underscore player classes, and then we do hard brackets, and then we pass through player dot user ID is equal to self. So that way we actually set a key with our object here, and that key being the player's user ID. So now we can go ahead and get our class anytime we have our player. And I'm going to go ahead and comment this out. And we're going to pretend like our, we're actually with the second scenario where we're going to be creating multiple objects per player. So what we would do in this case is we would say player class dot all underscore players dot all underscore player classes. And then we'll do the same thing, player dot user ID. But this time we set it to an empty table. And the reason for this is because we need to be able to store multiple objects inside of our table and not just one. So once we create this empty table, what we're going to do is we're going to say table.insert and then we're going to do player class, player class dot all underscore player classes. And then we pass through the player dot user ID. And then we have and that gives us the empty table that we created. And then from there, we could just go ahead and pass through the self, which is the object that we created. So this is obviously it looks a little more complicated, but with more practice, it'll make more sense. But anyways, I'm going to go ahead and delete this. And we do fall into the first category, thankfully. So all we need to do is this right here. So now that we have done that, we can actually get it um, as long as we have the player. So we have the player here. So we'll say local player underscore class is equal to, and then we'll do player class module dot all underscore player classes. And then we're just gonna go ahead and pass through that key, which is player dot user ID. So now obviously what we wanna do is we wanna call this method right here that is called give XP. So we're gonna say player underscore class colon give XP. And then let's go ahead and pass the amount. So we'll just do one, for example. And then we're just going to go ahead and print player underscore class dot XP. So now when we go ahead and play the game, every time we click it, as you can see, it goes ahead and prints out our XP, which is pretty cool. And that is how we use a method. Now, obviously, there are so many methods you guys can use depending on what classes you're doing. Like if there's a pet class, you could do like, for example, an equip method where whenever you click a button, you equip a pet and things like that. And then also you could do something like if self.xp is greater than or equal to self.p needed then. And then here we can make a new function, function player class colon level up. And then we could just call self colon level up just like that. So there are lots of cool things we could do. And obviously we don't have an XP needed. So let me go ahead and create that. I'm going to put that next to the XP. So we'll do P needed is equal to nil. And then if we go back into this main script, I'm going to go ahead and let's see one, two, three, four. So one, two, three. And then here we're going to put like a um, hundred, for example. So basically it's saying if our XP is greater than or equal to the XP needed to level up, then we're going to go ahead and call the level up method. And then here, obviously we're just going to do self dot level plus equals one. And then we're going to do self dot XP is equal to zero. And then we're just going to print self.level. And I'm actually just going to go ahead and change this to 25 so we can see it in action. So let's go ahead and click the... Oh, okay. So it looks like we have an error here. Let's see what the problem is. Oh, and it's because inside of here, I need to go ahead and make a new one for XP needed. So we're going to go ahead and do P underscore needed. And then we'll do self.p needed is equal to XP underscore needed. And then let's go ahead and play. And now it should be working good. So once we get to 25 XP... As you can see, we go ahead and level up and it prints out two right there because that is our new level. And obviously there are a lot more things we could do with this. Like every time we level up, for example, our multiplier can go up by self.multiplier can go up by like 0 0.1 or something like that. And there's a lot of things you guys can do, but I think this video has been pretty good so far. And this is like the very basics of object oriented programming. So what I want you guys to do is I first want you to master this creating different kinds of classes. So basically different kind of blueprints that you guys think you could use in a game. So for example, I'll give you, I'll give you guys a few so you can make a pet class, which you can create to make multiple pets. You can create like a gun class, for example, which is something that I actually did. And the methods you could use are like shoot or equip or unequip. And yeah, you guys can think of multiple classes, but I just want to go ahead and let you guys practice with this and make sure you guys get this down first before learning any other more complicated things like inheritance and stuff like that. So I hope this video did help you guys and I'll see you in the next video.